Hi, and welcome to chapter four. Chapter four is on the most important part that gets overlooked on our computer, and that is the motherboard. Chapter four actually incorporates both the motherboard and the CPU, and I've broken out chapter four B as mainly about the CPU. We will talk about the CPU today, but or over chapter four, but not to the depth that we will in chapter four B. So let's go ahead and get started on chapter four on the motherboard. In this chapter, we're gonna learn about the types of motherboards. Uh, in general, we are gonna stick with one form factor that we've talked about before, that's ATX form factor. We're gonna ignore all the other ones, although the variations in ATX we'll go ahead and include. We're gonna learn about the different components that can come in any given motherboard. They aren't all on every motherboard, but we need to be able to recognize what those components are and what we want uh, to have when we're going to purchase one. Uh, the next two I don't have squared out on the board there because we're already doing those and we're doing those all year long. Uh, the basic procedures for building a computer, we've done that already several times and we'll continue to do that in every chapter throughout this course so that by the time you're done, building a computer is something that you consider eh, nothing. Uh, and that includes obviously how to install a motherboard because you can't build a computer without installing a motherboard. So the, really those top two are where our main emphasis is on chapter four. So we know from chapter one what a motherboard is. What is that? Motherboard is the largest uh, part circuit board in the computer uh, and it is what connects everything together, right? Uh, it is the part that most people forego, don't even know what it is inside their PC, but it can be the most important part in our PC. So what is that purpose of the motherboard? And I already alluded to it. The main purpose of the motherboard is to connect everything up with a CPU. And this is the underside of a motherboard, and it shows all the bus lines that connect everything in this motherboard all terminate right here. And that is where the CPU socket is on this particular motherboard. So the purpose of the motherboard, as I've said before from the beginning, if it's not connected to the motherboard, it's not part of the computer because the motherboard is what connects everything to that central processing unit. So that's the main purpose of the motherboard. Motherboard determines all kinds of things, but the biggest thing it determines, and the first thing we're really gonna talk about is that the motherboard determines the types and speeds of processors that we can put in it. That's number one. Uh, when we look at a motherboard, we want to make sure it takes the kind of CPU that we want it to take, and that's part of the motherboard form factor. It also determines the chipset on the motherboard, and the combination of that chipset and BIOS settings are what determines what the CPU can actually talk to. And so it also does the rest of those things. It in includes the number, of number and type of expansion slots that we can possibly have on any given motherboard. It determines the kinds, types, and speeds of memory that we can have on our motherboard. And those are the two biggest things. When we say number of expansion slots, we also go into other things that can connect to the motherboard, like what kind of hard drives, uh, what kind of optical drives, how many of those, all are determined by the motherboard. And lastly, the form factor of the motherboard obviously impacts what case we're gonna buy and what type of case that we can buy. So all those things, on the motherboard selection impact all the other things to come, which is why uh, this chapter is the first chapter that you have a major project in, and that research project will continue on throughout the entire rest of the course. The things that you build, work on here, we'll build on next chapter, we'll build on the next chapter, and we'll build on the next chapter, because the motherboard determines all those other things. So, first objective, is to understand the relationship between the CPU socket and CPU manufacturers. The motherboard, every motherboard has one kind of CPU socket. That socket determines everything about the CPU. And I have that down there, it says Ford versus Chevrolet. Think of the two manufacturers of sockets like two manufacturers of cars. Ford doesn't have one car. Ford has many cars and trucks and other vehicles so does Chevrolet. So when we talk about the two CPU manufacturers, we're not talking about two CPUs. We're talking about two lines of CPUs that each one of those manufacturers has. So when we look at motherboards, there's two 
relatively big picture kind of sockets on motherboards. And those are PGA sockets and LGA sockets. PGA were the first kind of sockets that we had in computers, and LGA are the most current kinds and newest kinds of sockets uh, that we have on motherboards today. So we have PGA and LGA. This is an LGA socket, and we can tell it's an LGA socket because of that silver cover that goes on. The CPU would be right there. There isn't one on this one. And that hook there tells us it's an LGA socket, and a PGA socket in comparison is the one that you've already used numerous times uh, putting in a CPU. It has a bunch of holes in it uh, with a straight lever arm that locks in the CPU. And those holes are for the pins on the CPU. Therefore, a PGA socket is called a pin grid array socket. Whereas an LGA socket has no holes, it's called a land grid array socket. So those are the two main categories of sockets. They're not the all the sockets that there are out there. They're the two main categories. So LGA sockets are mainly, mainly, mainly made for one manufacturer, and that is Intel. Intel, um, by and large now, only makes LGA sockets for desktop computers. And when we talk about this, we're talking about things you and I would buy on a regular basis. We're talking about desktop PCs. There are caveats for laptops and there's caveats for servers. We're talking in this course mainly about PCs, desktop PCs, consumer PCs. So LGA sockets are mainly made, not entirely, mainly made by Intel. And Intel is that CPU manufacturer that you all probably know the mess most about. They have lots of advertisements. You might see them on TV. The Intel Core bonk, 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 family um, is by Intel. By contrast, most PGA sockets made today are made for AMD. Uh, AMD is a really a, a smaller CPU manufacturer than Intel, but they certainly make a lot of really good processors and usually less expensive options of processors that we can use uh, for our desktops. So we've got LGA mainly made by Intel, PGA mainly made by AMD, and there are uh, caveats to both those, and we're going to go through those caveats. So we should be able, when we look at a motherboard, to immediately know whether it's an LGA or a PGA socket. This is an LGA socket without a CPU in it, and the reason we show a picture without a CPU is because the CPU is on it, you wouldn't be able to see the socket. This has in the LGA socket has the same cover with the same hook that goes over it. These are not pins, although it's hard to tell from this uh, quality of photo. These are actually little pieces of metal that the, the CPU just sits on. They're kind of little, little nubs that they sit on to make those contact. They are not holes and there are no pins associated with an LGA socket. So that's what an LGA socket looks like. And again, this is a PGA socket. These are all holes that those pins on your CPU drop into. PGA sockets are also referred to as ZIF sockets. And ZIF, Z-I-F, stands for zero insertion force. So you can use that term synonymously. PGA sockets are also ZIF sockets. There is no force required, as you know now from doing it, to get a CPU into a PGA slot. You just drop it in there, hold it, make sure it's down, and then you put that level arm down to make sure it locks in. So that is a PGA or a ZIF socket, and again, that's the difference between the two. So the motherboard selection determines the socket, and the socket then determines the make and model of CPU that can be installed. So we need to understand that relationship now between the socket, and when we look at a motherboard, it's gonna say exactly what socket it is, and what CPU and CPU socket can go in there. Now, I already said the two manufacturers are Intel and AMD, and, and as a little bit of history, uh, Intel was the first CPU manufacturer. IBM got them in the, in the um, business of making CPUs for them. And then after a few years, IBM came to Intel and said, you know what, we, only, we don't want to be bound to you only. You need to get somebody else in the CPU business so that we have options to buy from. And that was really an attempt 
to make sure Intel didn't strong arm IBM for pricing. Um, so Intel went out and found AMD, which was a memory manufacturer at the time, and said, hey, we'd like to subcontract you to make processors. So Intel got AMD in the, the business of making processors. And then IBM later on said, Intel, you know what, we're fine. We don't, you don't need to subcontract to AMD anymore. So Intel said, you know what, we don't need you anymore to AMD. And they broke the contract with AMD. And then AMD sued them. And AMD won in the range of, I think, $2.1 billion from Intel uh, because of broken contract uh, agreements. And so Intel effectively made their only competition and funded their only competition to start making uh, CPUs. A little background for you on CPUs. So we've already said Intel processors are mainly land grid arrays. They have these little dots on the bottom of the processor and um, LGA slots come in. There's different LGA slots. We're going to look at a table with those. But LGA slots all have these little kind of bumps on them that those little dots connect with when you put a processor in an LGA socket. AMD mainly makes PGA processors and they all have pins on them and those pins drop into those holes on a PGA or ZIF socket which you've all done at this point as well. So those processors connect to the motherboard via the socket the socket has to match the processor and there are a number of different sockets out there that then we can look at the list of processes of three, four. And we're gonna look at those socket types. This is a, a picture of sockets. So we're gonna look down a little more in depth at these in just a second. The blue ones, which you can't read right now, are all um, Intel and the tannish and orange are all AMD sockets. And we're going to go ahead and open up that page, see if it opens to the right one. Yep, it's just a page on Wikipedia that goes through all the different socket types. And you can see I'm scrolling all the way down here for all those socket types. We are not going to concern ourselves with these sockets that are up at the top that came out in the 70s. In fact, as we talk about sockets, if it wasn't done after 2014, we don't care. So, which some of you may say 2014, but we have to draw a line, right? So we're gonna draw 2014 as that line. So if we look at starting in 2014, and we're only again talking about desktop ones, uh, AMD desktop was PGA, and that's a socket FM2. AMD1 socket for a desktop was PGA. LGA, again, blue is Intel, uh, for Intel at the same time. That's when they really, they had started LGA before that, by the way. But you can see uh, Intel had the LGA 2011 socket, 1151 socket, the 1200 socket, we're skipping servers, uh, the 2066 socket. So Intel has or one, two, three, four, five different sockets since 2014 that are all eligible to be looked at uh, in this class right now because I've drawn that line. If we talk about AMD, AMD has um, a PGA, there's second PGA, there's a third PGA for a desktop skipping server, and then, oh no, it's an LGA. And that's why I said mainly PGA. The newest sockets, and these are both for AMD Ryzen Threadrippers, uh, and these are two different sockets for the Threadripper, the Threadripper 3000 series, the TR4 and the TRX4 socket, they look very much the same, um, are the newest one. And really AMD had to go to that because the CPU on the Threadripper is ginormous uh, in comparison to a normal PGA socket, and I think they really felt like they had to go to an LGA socket at that time because it would be so easy to ruin our Threadripper processor with pins on it. And if you're talking about a $1,000 processor, you don't want that to happen. So when I said mainly, that's what I meant. Mainly LGA is Intel, mainly PGA is AMD, but there is these two sockets that are AMD and LGA that fall in there. So. If you have uh, a LGA 2066 socket, you must therefore be buying a Intel CPU. Uh, 
If you have a TR4 socket, you must therefore, oh, there's a good picture of the TR4 socket. Can't really tell how big it is, but it's really big. You must therefore have an AMD Threadripper CPU that goes into it. That's the connection uh, there between, the, between those two. So that's what that chart is to kind of show you that that relationship between the CPU and the CPU socket. The most important part of selecting a motherboard, um, or one of the most important parts, is to make sure that the CPU you want will go in the motherboard that you're buying. There's lots of other reasons to select a motherboard, but the CPU is the first most important one. And then after this video, we'll go into those other reasons and the other parts of the motherboard that you would use to select one.